Kaya, Ngan Quarrel Alton, Ngan Boranga Junior. My name's Alton, and my totem, the animal I need to take care of, is a 28 parrot. My connections are down here through the southwest in Yungar country, and today we're on Wajak country, one of the places where my family come from. I'm going to be doing a bush science lesson with you today, and we're going to be talking about a very special tree, one that I'm sure many of you have seen. It's the grass tree. We call it the balga. The balga is one that you might recognize with its thick black trunk, green spiky leaves, and a long wooden spike on the top. The balga grows very slowly, somewhere between one and six centimeters each year. So when you see a large balga, it's usually very, very old. Every now and then, one of these grows too tall and topples over, which is a great opportunity for us because we never want to come through and knock these things down just to collect these resources. So when one gets too tall, falls down, we go to the base and we collect this thick black resin. This is how we make one of the world's first bush glues. However, that's not the only thing we need. We collect that resin, we head towards our campfire, we spark it up, and then we head out to collect some of our yonga guna, our kangaroo poo, and some charcoal from that campfire. When you combine these together, they make one of the world's first bush glues. This is one of the world's first bush chemistries right here. The glue itself comes from that resin. And then the rupu and the charcoal, they bind it together. So you take that mixture, you heat it up. Once it gets warm over the fire, it becomes soft and plasticky. We can then start to build our tool. We start to slowly add the mixture, heat it up, and over time it's going to get thicker, thicker, and thicker. Once it's at a certain point, we can start to manipulate this, play around with it. We can take some of our stones. We can make large pieces like our axe right here, sticking a very large stone in. Or we can take a series of smaller stones, sharper ones, put those in and create some of our tarps, our knives, which we use for cutting. Now this is an important lesson. Please do not knock these trees over. This is an important part of our culture traditionally. We would never come through and cut down trees, cut down branches, or take any of these resources without first going to the people whose responsibility it is to care for them. Now I've been very fortunate to have some very knowledgeable elders who have some amazing, amazing practices they pass down to us. Everything from science and chemistry. This is a great example where they actually take us out and they show us how to apply this knowledge and how to apply it effectively. There's no books, there's no way to learn this other than the elders taking you and showing you exactly how it's done.